We're all about facts, of course, here in the Chalk Talk. And it turns out President Obama, well, to be kind, he wasn't all about facts in his State of the Union last night. He had bigger things in his mind. So we thought we would uh, take a look here, if you can see this. Five of the most egregious, what would you call them, claims, stretches of the imagination, exaggerations. Let, let, let's start with the president bragging about, first of all, his jobs record. Here he is. After years of grueling recession, our businesses have created over six million new jobs. Six million new jobs. I mean, that is impressive, isn't it? There's a little problem. We're not saying the president did it intentionally. It had to be an accident of some kind. Uh, but the president started counting, and, and this is sort of peculiar, months after he took office and months after the recession ended uh, in February, February of 2010. Six million jobs if you start them. But since the president took office, private sector jobs have grown by a third of that six million. Uh, that's only one point nine million jobs. And then you look at the public sector job losses and you de deduct it from uh, January 20th of 2009 when he took office, the overall job gain drops to 1.2 million. Not 6 million. 6 million jobs and the reality is 1.2 million. It may be an exaggeration, an over-exaggeration, perhaps an accident as I said, but then this must have been another accident. After shedding jobs for more than 10 years, our manufacturers have added about 500,000 jobs over the past three. Whoops. Oh, no. 500,000 manufacturing jobs. But again, the president is counting from a peculiar date. He chose for that one January of 2010. <laughs> and, and, and he, you know, it was a year earlier that he took office. Since the president did take office in January of 2009, there have been actually 600,000 fewer manufacturing jobs uh, as a result in the economy because of the jobs lost that year. So what we have here is a minus 600,000 from what he asserted was half a million. Uh, and and here, herein lies one of those, well, misrepresentations, startling exaggerations, little stretches. Well, the president may may love selling the rebirth of American manufacturing, but the reality is there are nearly three million fewer manufacturing jobs in the country uh, than 10 years ago. Aside from that, there was also this rather startling claim about guns. Police chiefs are asking our help to get weapons of war and massive ammunition magazines off our streets because these police chiefs, they're tired of seeing their guys and gals being outgunned. Whoa, scary stuff, if only he were actually correct in his statement. Actually, police and federal law enforcement agencies aren't being outgunned by AR-15s. As we've reported here, in fact, there were 323 murders committed with a rifle. 323 murders committed with rifles. And in 2011, the most uh, recent year for which those uh, facts are available, that is significantly fewer than the 496 murders committed with hammers. We're just going to call it, if we may, H and C, hammers and clubs. This is the reality. This is the reality. The clubs are outgunning the rifles when it comes to murder in this country, Mr. President. I know that's an inconvenient, uh, and, and I'm sure it's just an awkward lapse on the part of your speechwriters. Now, let's take a look at the president's seemingly favorite subject, and that is energy. Today, no area holds more promise than our investments in American energy. After years of talking about it, we're finally poised to control our own energy future. We have doubled the distance our cars will go on a gallon of gas. Wow, that's true. Uh, on paper, anyway, uh, it's from 27 miles per gallon to 54 and a half. Uh, because of a deal with the automakers back in 2011 to have vehicles with an average fuel economy of 54.5 miles per gallon. We didn't exactly double it, though, but even though it's twice as much, because what happened is the 27, 27 miles per gallon is now. Uh, the deadline for the 54.5 miles per gallon is 12 
years away. Uh, just a slight exaggeration. Uh, 2025, that's when that'll kick in. Seems somewhat futuristic to say it's uh, already doubled. And by the way, the car makers won't start making the changes uh, for that mileage until the 20, the 20. 17 models roll out. So again, the president, a slight 12-year, a little better than a decade exaggeration, no harm, no foul. And finally, there's the claim on the, what caused quite a stir, the federal minimum wage. Even with the tax relief we put in place, a family with two kids that earns the minimum wage still lives below the poverty line. That's wrong. Tonight, Let's declare that in the wealthiest nation on earth, no one who works full time should have to live in poverty and raise the federal minimum wage to $9 an hour. Well, research shows raising the minimum wage doesn't help the poor. In fact, a 2010 study by two economists of the 28 states that raised their minimum wages between 2003 and 7 found no evidence of a decline in state poverty rates. For one, a majority of working age individuals who live in poverty 55% simply don't work, so it's hard to uh, benefit from a wage increase for them. And a, more, a majority of those who do uh, earn the minimum wage, 56%, live in households that aren't in poverty. Speaker Boehner said it pretty well. He said government, government wage controls the minimum wage. Increasing it results in fewer jobs. The president's a great guy. We just wanted to point out a few things that just didn't it didn't work out the way I, apparently uh, his speechwriters uh, wanted to, to deal with it. And by the way, uh, you, you may have heard about Marco Rubio uh, and some of the networks in the left wing operations are just, I, I mean, they're having a fit over this. Uh, last night, Senator Rubio went for a, a, a bottle of water. CNN uh, <laughs> thought it might be a career ender. I, I, and I just, excuse me just a minute, I want to do one thing here. I, you know, I, I thought it was kind of inspiring, actually. Uh, I hope this isn't a career ender. That, that would be unfortunate, wouldn't it? And I thought that actually, Senator Rubio, uh, I thought he handled that doggone well. As a matter of fact, I kind of like him better after he did that, because that was about as normal and natural a thing as a man could have done there. And it's kind of nice to see it, you know, instead of all those hitched up, kind of tight, media-trained politicians that we see so much of.